Welcome to Amazon.com in our lab video series on Cisco ASA Firepower. You can find a complete list of ASA Firepower videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In the last video, we have installed the Firepower service on our Cisco ASA, but you can't really configure it until we've installed the management server. So what we're going to do in this video is to install our Firesight management system. And this is also known as Defense Center, which is the source for our terminology. And hopefully by the end of the video, we will have access to our Fireside system, although we're not quite going to be adding any mesh device in this video, but we will do so in the later videos. So this video is just going to primarily focus on the Fireside system installation. So just to refer back quickly to the network diagram that we introduced to you guys in the previous video, what we're going to be doing is within this green circle, which is installing our Cisco Fireside version 531. And this is going to be the main component of our lab setup here. For the prerequisites of the lab, you want to make sure that your server is running ESXi version 5 or above with a 64-bit CPU with the VT support and also enable. As far as the hardware requirements for the VM, you want to make sure that you have a minimum of 4-core CPU, 4 gig of memory, and 250 gig of hard drive. Next, you need to download a virtual defense center file from cisco.com, which, which is what we're going to use for our installation. And the last thing you need is internet access to your environment, since the Fireside system is going to be communicating to the internet a lot to download all sorts of updates. All right, so let's go ahead and begin our installation. So let me first RDP into our Windows 2008 machine right here, which we will launch, or actually I've already launched the V client connected to our ESXi server. Before we do that, actually, let me first show you the file that I've extracted from the found that got downloaded from cisco.com as you can see right here so as far as defense center virtual 64 vmware version 531 although this is going to get deployed as the dot ova file you can see the file itself after you extract from the file that you downloaded from cisco.com it doesn't actually have the dot ova extension but that's okay as you can see in a minute here that it will work just fine so for those of you who is already familiar somewhat with the esxi and have maybe deployed an ovf or ova file with the other Cisco technology, the process right here is going to be pretty much identical. And for those who are not quite familiar with ESXi, don't worry, this is actually pretty straightforward. And there's not much you can do since all the VM specification is already contained or defined within the OVA file itself. So what we need to do here is to go to File and then click Deploy OVF Template. All right, then you need to point to the file that you have extracted from the file you downloaded. In, in our case right here is our the file I just show you. Actually, you have to go to Browse and pick the correct file. Looks like we have another file selected there. So under the file power, you can see by default, it would look for a .ova.ovf extension. So we need to go to All File and then locate the file that we need, which is this guy right here, Defense Center. Click Open. Then Next. And it's just telling you that the file size is 523 meg. If you do thin provision, it would be 1.4. Thick provision is 250, which is what I mentioned for the minimum hardware, uh, hard drive requirement. And description, click next. You have to give it the name. So we're going to call this one LM, let me see, LM dash Farsight 1. Dash Farsight 1. Click next. Then you need to pick your local storage, or it can be remote storage. For us, we're just going to do the local data store. Click next. Here you have an option to do where there's thick or thin provision. You can always recommend if you can afford the space to do thick provision in production. Here, since it's just a lab setup, we'll do thin provision to save ourselves some disk space. Next, you need to specify what network you want to put your server on. For us, is our VLAN 32, which is our server VLAN. So right here, drop down, see if you can find VLAN 32 in this list. Right there, VLAN 32 server. Click next. Let's do a quick review, make sure you're not missing on anything, and click Finish. And then it's just going to start deploying the VM. All right, so I'm just going to let that run since it shouldn't take too long, and then I'll probably speed that up later in the video so you guys don't have to sit through this as long as I have to. All right, so the deployment of the VM has just completed. Before we go ahead and power up that VM, I want to show you real quick the VM specification. So let's go edit settings, just to show you the actual 
hardware resources right there. Memory is four gig. CPU is four virtual sockets. Then hard drives obviously two fifty gig, and we're doing thin provision. And as far as the option uh, operating system is other two point six Linux sixty four bits. And obviously our network adapters with the current adapter E1000. So you can see most of these parameters are set for you or spec um, defined within that OVA file. So there's nothing that you really need to do. And now that we've got ourselves a VM, we can go ahead and power that up and open the console. All right, so it's booting up right now. This whole process is going to take probably maybe 15 minutes or so. So I'm going to go ahead and pause our video and return when that completes. So now that we're back on the lock-in prompt, the installation of our Fireside system should have been completed. So to lock in, the default credential is username admin, and the password is source fired with the uppercase S for the source. So source fired right there, and now we are in the system. And as you can see that the whole setup process so far, installation process hasn't really prompted us to configure any network parameters. So the first thing we need to do here is to give our server an IP address so we can HTTPS into it, although the command to do that is not too obvious. It's actually a script that you need to run, and you can see that if you do question mark, there's nothing really tells you what to configure here. Uh, unless you reference the installation guides, then you have no idea what uh, command you need to issue. But this is just basically a one-time thing, so the command that you need here is sudo slash usr for user slash local slash sf slash bin slash configure dash network. All right, and as soon as you execute that script, since we are elevating uh, privilege here using the sudo command for those who are familiar with the Linux, we need to provide the admin password. Again, this will be source fired. So type source fired, enter. Now it's prompting us to configure IPv4, so set yes. So the IP address of our server, let's reference back to our diagram here, is 172.16.32.107. 172.16.34.107. Subnet mass is slash 24. And default gateway is 16.32.1. All right, make sure you have verified the configuration. Say it yes. We do not want to configure IPv6, so say no. And right there, the network configuration should be updated. While it's doing its thing, let me bring up a command prompt and see if I can try to ping that. 32.107. And you can see it's now pingable. And at the same time, there's a message that came back and said, now you can go to the HTTPS with the IP address we just configured to finish the installation. OK, so all we are providing to the server here is just IP address, subnet mask, and the default gateway. So now I'm going to open up Firefox, close that since we're done with that at this point. We're going to basically HTTPS into our server right here. I kind of have a shortcut built already. And let me click on that. And here we're going to 172.16.32.107. As always with Firefox, I have to accept the certificate since it's untrusted. And now we're at the Cisco Fireside system login page. Okay, so the username still the default admin and source file with uppercase S. Since this is the first time locking into the system, what we need to do here is to basically finishing up our basic configuration. So starting from the top, we need to change the password. So instead of leaving it default source fired, change it to the password of your choice. Let's step through this protocol IPv4, management IPs, all of these came from the configuration we just did on the command line. Host name for us is Farsite1. Domain name is labminutes.com. DNS server 32.40. We don't have a secondary or tertiary, so we'll skip all that. For the NTP, we're just going to point it to our switch, which is 32.1. Also set it manually, but I'd highly recommend always use NTP, especially in the system like this, where the time synchronization is very important. Next, you can change your time zone. Since we're a Pacific standard, we're just going to look for America, Los Angeles. Save. 
then done. Make sure that's updated. So right here you also have an options to set up the recurring rule updates, uh, geolocation updates, automatic backup and all that. We're just gonna kind of skip through all this since we're gonna take care of this in the next video, as well as the license part of it. Skip through that. Also, we're not gonna add the device just quite yet, although you can do it right here also, device registration. And the last thing before we kind of finish up right here is to accept the end user agreement and click apply. Okay, give it a few seconds here. And now we are being redirected. So the configuration settings are being applied. You'll be redirected momentarily. So it looks like the redirection is happening. And we should be placed into the default system dashboard. And as you can see, this, since this is a fresh install, there's not much to see on this page, no data, absolutely whatsoever. All right, so at this point that we have our Fireside system pretty much completely installed. So our next video is going to go through some post-installation and basic configuration tests on the Fireside system. And that should wrap up our video on ASA Firepower Fireside system installation. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmiss.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.